what is going on everybody it is alex coming back at you with another video and today we are going to be doing a good old mock the mock on a tdn spicy edition mock draft so right now we're in the middle of free agency period so i'm not gonna be doing a mock draft for a couple of days at least because i want to see where some of these big big names go so obviously that would change a lot of things so if you guys do like mock drafts in that whole entire draft idea feel free to stick around and i do like to do a lot of stuff regarding the usfl as well as college as well as a lot of other stuff so if you guys do enjoy that i would love to have you here and of course links are down in the description for other ways to be involved in the community because we have a discord with over 130 people let's kick this off because it says spicy edition i already see from the thumbnail we we got something to talk about so start off with the number one pick jags get evan neal of course this was made two days before free agency started um or two get is it two days before it might have been like I have no idea what damn day it is. Welcome to off season. Uh, yeah, no, it, it was actually made yesterday. So this was right before all the craziness happened. You know, Evan Neal would still be a phenomenal option. I still would kind of consider taking him again. I think this edge rush class is extremely deep and I personally would rather continue bolstering the offensive line, but you know, it's logical once you spend a shit ton of money on offensive line, it's probably best to kind of make your team more competitive everywhere else, especially when the value is good enough. So I think Aiden Hutchinson probably will be the first pick, but the lions go Malik Willis and DJ shark just signed with the lions earlier today. So if you guys want to see free agency videos, I'm bringing, I make those every single day now, but you know, Malik Willis could be a reason why DJ wanted to sign with the lions. I just don't know why he would want to be Jared Goff's number one doesn't really make that much sense to me. I just, I have a weird feeling that the Lions might be trying to get more veteran quarterback or going and swinging for the fences for Malik Willis. I don't know. It's just a weird gut feeling that I have, but I'm not going to really implement it until more signs point that way. I just don't think that Malik Willis is the number two overall pick. And I've been a big fan of Malik since the beginning. So yeah, just a little bit weird there. Texans going Aiden Hutchinson here. Uh, that would just be as good of a pick as you can probably do besides maybe Icky. Cause again, there are tons of rumors. So I think that you could kind of maximize your value elsewhere, but Aiden Hutchinson is far from something to scoff at. Again, I think he's going to be the number one pick just getting Jermaine Johnson here. Uh, oh, wow. I did not, I just didn't even process that. Holy shit. <laughs> like what the hell is going on? I know it's a spicy edition, so I'm going to give a little bit of leeway, but Jermaine over KT is at, like, I'll say this right now, and I did this on my Twitter, so feel free to follow me there because, again, if you guys want to talk to me, Discord and Twitter are probably the two best ways, uh, besides the comment section below, of course. But I was saying that the Scherf signing to Jacksonville was kind of an easy way to open up the gateway for KT to be a lock top two again, because you think about it, there's a pretty good chance that Jacksonville's going Aiden Hutchinson or KT with the number one pick. They're going edge. That's a bit unfortunate. Again, with uh, top of the, like the best value per pick, especially when comparing it to the rest of the class is going to be going after an offensive lineman with number one pick. But that means that at the number two pick, there's still KT and then the edge rushers on the board and the offensive line is not a priority for the Detroit lions. So it feels like KT is back in the mix. Like even with the bad interviews, even with him falling here and there, uh, the Jaguars have shown their hand that maybe they aren't that confident in the offensive line. You know, Icky is going to be a project. Could they still take him? Yes. hundred percent. And I'll be a probably more in favor of that than anything else. Again, I think you get really damn good value around two edge. But honestly, you know, the way it's unfolding, KT might be a lock top two again. Uh, so, yeah, this is ridiculous, though. KT deserves to be there at number four, um, even though it's, I know it's a spicy addition. Uh, Jermaine Johnson, again, it's not like he's a true junior doing this. It's not like he ran a 4-2 or 437. Like, he's a good athlete, and he performed very well, but he. He just can't compare to the ceiling of KT, who's a true junior. He's my age. We, we're in the same class. Like, he is, like, 20, 
21 years old. Like that's, that's a lot different than Jermaine who's going to be 23, 24. So yeah, there's just not really any reason for it. I know it's spicy addition, but there needs to be at least some reason behind it. I don't see that. Trevon Walker to the Giants, that makes sense because he's a true junior who's an athletic freak and you just can't make them. Jermaine Johnson, I've been a huge fan. I was probably one of the first people to put Jermaine as high as 16. He's, he's nowhere close to Trevon Walker. Like if you put Trevon at four, okay, that's a spicy thing for sure, but at least it's understandable. Uh, Jermaine just doesn't make any sense at all. But Trevon Walker at five would. Again, KT should be going above both of these guys, but I understand, again, it is a spicy addition. Panthers going KT. So I actually have a weird feeling. The, the Panthers let Hassan Reddick go. If they make a move on a quarterback, which personally, I know that they're in the Deshaun Watson thing, but if they fall out of Deshaun Watson, I think they should go after Jimmy G. Honestly, get a quarterback that's just pretty much a better version of Teddy Bridgewater, which is probably the best Panthers team we'd seen. Uh, and then draft someone like KT, Charles Cross, uh, E.K. McQuanu at number six. Like, if you get KT at six, one, again, we already talked about this. I think he's a lock at two. But if somehow, some way, he falls there, now you don't have Son Reddick, who I thought was going to be coming back for sure. Now he's in Philly. I think that would be a really good spot to potentially take a super high-end edge rusher. Regardless, in the fourth round, you could probably get a day two worthy edge for sure. So I think that that'd be pretty damn phenomenal, if not round two. But yeah, E. Kamakwanu goes to the Giants. That'd be a damn steal. So yeah, personally, I'd probably flip the two. But, you know, it is what it is. Falcons going Chris Olave. I know it's a spicy mock, but there's just no, there's no logical reason whatsoever why Chris Olave would be taken above Garrett Wilson. Just not. And I know there's actually some draft analysts out there that have Olave above him. And to those people, I say just actually turn on the tape for once. Uh, yeah, I mean, Garrett Wilson's been an actual number one. Chris Olave has never, ever been. He's been surpassed. Really good floor dude. Really good. Like, he's worth a second rounder, if not a late first. But at the same time, he's always been a number two or worse, and he will probably always be that way versus Garrett Wilson. who could actually be a one, and this team needs a one. Seahawks going Sauce Gardner. I love it. Uh, that'd be my dream for them. Just, I, I think that he's Richard Sherman, but better. And I think that Drell Revis might be a better comp. And I might, I might end up getting roasted for that. That might be my, like, this, like, this didn't turn out well, or like, wish I could delete this tweet type thing. But, you know, like, if it's going to end up aging poorly, I'm willing to do it for someone who I really believe in. And that's Sauce Gardner, I really do believe in. Garrett Wilson is next. I, that, I mean, I don't know how spicy that is, but I love it. Uh, Drake, Je Drake, woof. Drake London, same USC, but uh, different Drake. Drake London to Washington. I'm starting to see that that is a much more uh, viable possibility. But of course, Kyle Hamilton, I still think is on the board too. So that could have been a hot one right there. Jordan Davis to the Vikings. They just brought on Harrison Phillips. So obviously, again, they wouldn't know. But also, they did release their D tackle. It's possible. It is definitely possible. Michael Pierce is gone. Uh, David Ojabo to the Browns. They could try to do that to keep them from the Ravens, but they did just trade today. Again, I'm not judging this mock off of it. I'm just telling you guys, uh, they did just trade today for Chase Winovich. Does that mean the edge is off the table? Absolutely not. But at the same time, I think it opens up the gateway for drafting a linebacker like Devin Lloyd. That might be featured in an upcoming mock for sure. Number 14, the Ravens go Trevor. Oh, wow. I said, I think they said the Ravens go Trevin. Ravens go Trevor Penning. It's early in the morning. Uh, yeah, I think that that is a bit of a reach, but again, with the lack of depth in this class, with the lack of quality players at a position of high need, I could see him getting overdrafted. Uh, number 15, Eagles going Zion Johnson. Absolutely no reason whatsoever why you should be going at this pick. No reason. Like, why not just wait till pick 19? I know it's a spicy mock, but it just doesn't make sense. Trent McDuffie as well. I think that he'd fit their scheme pretty well, but Definitely not among my top corners. I'm pretty sure Derek Singley is also on the board. Again, I know it's a spicy mock. Devontae Wyatt to the Chargers. Again, this is hindsight 2020. Uh, Chargers bringing on two interior defensive linemen kind of show their hand right now that they're probably not going to be going that way. But, I mean, at the time, I think that would be a phenomenal get. Phenomenal. 18, Saints, Charles Cross. That's a big plus. If he ends up falling that far, I would, I would literally be so happy 
for whoever the quarterback of the Saints is. Unless, of course, that, that pick might be the Texans at this point. God only knows. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, sorry. <laughs> what the hell is this? What? Okay, so I watched Christian Watson. He actually has an official grade. As um, I think he got, I think he got like a late third, but the guy is literally just a dude who runs fast. He's a worse version of Alec Pierce in every single way, except maybe he's a little bit faster deep. What the hell is this? Like, what? Honestly, though, like, what the hell? That's just no. I like the idea that you're getting a big receiver, though. I like that. I'm trying to extrapolate something from this. No, <laughs> just no, that is, that's straight cheeks. Like why the hell would you not go Alec Pierce at that point? This dude's an FCS receiver who's old, who didn't even produce that well. And when you just watch him play, I mean, like, I'm going to be honest, North Dakota state ran the ball a little bit too much for my, my liking. I got pretty damn bored watching Christian Watson, but the hell is going on here? Jalen Hurts doesn't even have a cannon. Like, what? You can't even use this. Like, if the Bills somehow had the balls to say, you know what? We're going to overdraft Christian Watson. Okay. No. I don't care how spicy this is. This is like going to a freaking Thai place and asking not for five out of five spiciness. Asking for ten out of ten out of five. This is some bullshit territory. No. 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 Uh, Steelers getting Kenny Pickett, of course. This is before what happened with Mitchell Trubisky. Uh, I still think the Steelers could take a QB, but I don't think they'd do it unless it's going to be a high-ceiling QB, like Matt Corral in the second. I don't think they go QB in the first. Uh, Derek Stingley to the Patriots. <laughs> that'd be funny. Uh, yeah, that, that'd be kind of crazy. But Raiders gain Jamison Williams. I'm just going to ignore it because it's complete bullshit. But even though I know it's a spicy mock, there's, you know, Mm. Jameson Williams to the Raiders makes sense. Uh, Linderbaum to the cards somehow makes sense. Mason Cole is now on the Steelers, so they don't really have much in terms of backup, even though I'm pretty sure Mason Cole, Mason Cole might've been traded to the Vikings. Regardless, uh, they could still use probably someone as a guard. I'm just trying here, guys. The Tyler Linderbaum to the Cardinals thing. It's like you have Rodney Hudson and I just, I just don't understand it. I know it's the best player available, though. Oh, for the love of God. This Cowboys fans rejoice. Rejoice in the stupidity. So stupid. Uh, Bill's going to Andrew Booth, someone who I actually had mocked to them last year. Ten's going to Traylon Burks. Could see it happening. You know, they do like A.J. Brown build, and he could play in the slot or boundary. And he's more of a contested catch threat. Uh, Kyler Gordon to the Buccaneers. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Uh, Kyler Gordon's not going to be a first round pick. Doesn't have the athleticism that people are looking for, nor the size. He's sub six foot. Uh, the Jahan Dotson here. I do that myself. I dig it. Oh, why the hell is this? The left tackle is the thing that also needs to be fixed. You can go after Lyle Collins. If they're that desperate for a right tackle, they would have traded for Lyle Collins or else they're going to sign one in free agency. You do not need to get on your knees for Daniel Fayolele. Don't do it. Just don't. Don't. This isn't even spicy. That's the thing. He didn't even play that well in the senior bowl. Just because you want a wall of meat doesn't mean you get to take him in the second. I have a weird feeling he's going to fall to the third round just because, again, there's big dudes that come around. He's just so damn raw that it's like, eh. I mean, could you? I could see potentially the Texans taking him at the top of the second if they're just going to be ballsy as all get go. Because I know they released Marcus Cannon, but I just think it's dumb. Uh, but Daxon Hill next, I think that's a perfect fit until they sign Justin Reed, which still, I mean, you're still losing Sorensen as well as uh, the Honey Badger, so it is still on the table. But maybe not a first round pick after you invest thirty, I think thirty one point five million. Bengals going Kenyon Green, that'd be a damn steal. And then Nicobe Dean ending off the first. I've been hearing that he's going to be falling out of the first round, which is really unfortunate because I'm holding my ground. I'm going to relook at the tape, of course, because you know I do like to like I when I you you're supposed to be open to other people's ideas. You know, Marcus, that franchise guy, has him as a third rounder. I I'm never going to get to that level because I didn't see it. 
I thought Nagobi Nakobe was actually really solid and maybe he doesn't fit that Mike role. So he probably could fall. He probably is more that like that will linebacker, or maybe he could even be that safety linebacker hybrid and dime packages. But I, I, I gave him a blue chip grade. I gave him top 15, like that guy, he was phenomenal to me. So we'll see what happens here. Obviously Devin Lloyd did not go in the first, which is of course complete bullshit, but yeah, this is our, obviously the worst mock I've ever seen. Keith Sanchez has been consistently pretty garbo since the beginning, putting like, I'm pretty sure he put Wandale Robinson as a first rounder when he first did it. But I mean, Hey, he's been around long enough to where I can shit on him. This is bad. I don't care how spicy it is. It's spicy. At least could have some reasoning behind it. Like you could have a player like Trevon Walker go at number two, because um, the lions want to shoot for this shoot for the stars and go for someone with a really high ceiling it just doesn't make sense to me but that is all for right now feel free to check back later for free agency day two thank you guys so much for watching see you on the far side peace